Everyone should create content, no matter who you are. Growing up my whole life, I never wanted to be in any sort of video or photo. I'd be the kid that'd be hiding, hiding around the back of the, the crowd or hiding around the back of the furniture not to get in a picture because I just hated, I, I just didn't have any self-esteem. I, I didn't want to cooperate or be involved with anything at all. But recently, as my self-esteem has managed to grow, I find a lot of enjoyment in posting my lifestyle online and what I do and staying authentic to myself. And through posting about myself, I've learned that I actually have a, a group of people who are interested in what I do and my uh, self-development journey. In a time where social media companies are constantly fighting for your attention, I think it's best to create and not consume content as much as possible. You wanna use social media as a tool and not a distraction. And this doesn't mean you need to use it purely for monetary gain. Just post about your life and make your, your life look interesting from anyone who stumbles across whatever page you're posting on. We're in an era... <sighs> We're in an era of the internet where so... <sighs> you know. We're in an era... <sighs> We're in an era of the internet where it's a bit... <sighs> We're in an era... <sighs> We're in an era of the internet where we can reach the most amount of people we could ever with our words. Creating this channel, I've had a surprisingly low amount of criticism. I've had maybe like a couple hate comments, that's it. Uh, compared to the 3,000 people that are constantly liking, watching and commenting on my videos. Your mind tends to focus on the hate comments because they do stick out. They stick out like a sore thumb when you've got walls and walls of comments congratulating you and praising you. And then you just see that one comment and you're like, oh, what do I do? What am I doing wrong? But you got to just remind yourself that no one better than you is going to hate on you. If someone's in a better position than you financially, physically, whatever position it may be, they're gonna support you. They're not gonna hate on you. People who hate on you are people who wanna bring you down to their level because they're insecure of their success. You may think that your life isn't that interesting to talk about or post about, but I assure you that if you have a hobby of some sort, whether that be playing an instrument, creating content, creating fitness content, or public speaking, activism, anything, someone out there will want to watch it. One of my very first fans who discovered my channel reached out to me on Instagram and showcased his channel to me. And it was a channel showcasing how different washing machines worked and the spin cycles. And I was thinking like, how surely like this is a very niche audience, but it turns out the guy had 2000 subscribers and people are very interested in watching washing machines and how they function. And that's just proof that literally anything you post can be successful and you don't need to do it for monetary gain. You can just do it for the sake of enjoying it. Like I'd rather spend my time creating content instead of just scrolling on Instagram, consuming content, because in that way, at least I'm doing something productive that can showcase what I like doing and further increase my individuality. In my journey to creating a personal brand, I was skeptical whether people would be interested in what I had to say. And I found that being authentic helps the most in starting a personal brand because people want to watch you for who you are they don't they don't care about the the content that you're producing like the reason why i have such a, a loyal a loyal audience is that because they're not too bothered about the content i'm creating they're interested more about me personally so whatever i post they will enjoy and they'll support me for it and that's the type of audience you want to build these these days because a lot of people are just in YouTube or content creation just for the sake of monetary gain. If you're the one that sticks out, is authentic, and you just create content for the sake of content, like you just do it because it's fun, you do it, you're not following a strict schedule or you're not following trends or patterns, you're going to be the one who sticks out and people are going to enjoy watching your content just because of who you are. They see that you're not trying to just leverage their attention for your own gain. And especially when you have a large audience watching you, you can't go back. It is very hard to fall off. Like you can only get better from there because you have a whole crowd watching you. That's why I think it's best to be as clear as possible with what you post. Keep everything authentic. Don't edit anything. Just showcase your life purely. And e even though you think it might be oversharing or oversharing what your hobbies are or it might be too much for some people or you or some people might think you're a bit egocentric for posting about yourself. You've got to realise that this is this is your life. You can do what you want. Like outside judgment does not does not cloud what you actually want to get in life. 
So like I said, once you've got an audience watching, you can't, you can't go backwards. It's only positive growth if you're consistent with what you do. And going back to the create, don't consume statement. I believe that yes, you can consume content if it positively, positively affects you. My content is supposed to be positive. It's supposed to inspire. And at the end of the day, I'm just doing it because I like to keep a track of what I'm doing currently. And I like showcasing my development. That's just who I am. Um, as someone who never really took any photos or videos of myself doing anything probably up until the age of 16, I now feel this immense motivation to actually showcase where I come from and how I got on top of life and really just put myself out there, put myself in the spotlight and just show how, how much better I can get and offer value along the way. Like I've had people close to me say that my YouTube channel, my YouTube channel is gay or it's like weird or cringe because I talk about stuff that might be a bit too personal. But at the end of the day, I don't care. Like this is just my online persona. Like this is who, who I am online. It doesn't really reflect who I am in person. Um, I still try to stay authentic, but at the end of the day, this is just me talking to a camera. I'm not really following a script. I read key points, I read bullet points, but I don't read off a script unless I'm planning a very detailed video. And if I'm gonna be honest, I think that content creation and creating a personal brand is the best type of business model to follow. If you want to become financially free and you don't feel like you have any skill sets, just try content creation out and you might be surprised at how many people would be interested in what you have to say or do. I tried stuff like drop shipping, trading. It just never stuck to me because I just, I wasn't interested in it enough. And you need to have the interest. You need to have motivation and discipline to work on a business model if you want to be successful at it. You need to beat the, um, I think it's called the Dunning-Kruger curve, where you start at the bottom with zero knowledge. You go up to the point of where you've got a little bit of knowledge and your motivation's at an all time high. And then it dips down when you start to realize as you get more knowledgeable on the subject that it's gonna be a lot harder than you actually think it's going to be. So then that's where most people quit. They're at the bottom and they quit. But if you keep pushing through gaining knowledge and not quitting, then it just keeps on getting better from there. And that's where I'm currently at. I've defeated the part of, um, well, it's called the, 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 Jesus Christ. It's called the despair valley and um, that, that, yeah, that's the lowest point of the graph. It's called a Dunning-Kruger curve. I'll try and get an image on screen. But luckily, because I've had so much success in a short period of time, I've managed to zoom past that. And now I'm just slowly increasing my knowledge and increasing my subscriber count as I go on. But if you're going to start content creation with the also side, the side motivation or priority of also earning from it, then you need to be wary of this uh, curve of motivation and you need to push past the uh, push the low part and build discipline. But any age can create any type of content. Like I've seen people 70, 80 year old, like create content on YouTube and very be very successful with it because like younger people like seeing older people do things. Same with older people like seeing younger people do things. You don't, you don't have to be a particular age. You don't need to be a teenager or someone who's constantly in this development phase. You can tell stories, you can reflect, you can do anything, showcase literally anything, record. It's literally quite expansive. You can do reviews, you can... Reviews are, reviews is a big one. I've seen a lot of people review um, different ha household items and they get a lot of views. I'm not saying that you need to become a, a personal brand in the fact that you just put your whole life and your whole face on the internet because that's a very strong thing to do. You need to... You have to have a lot of courage and self-esteem to put yourself on the internet and just talk to a camera. But even if you want to do faceless content, then that's also a great way to start because people will still like, hear your voice and they'll still get to know you as a person without having, I guess, your privacy interrupted. And I bet if some of my subscribers are between the ages of 15 and 25, you've had the thought of becoming a YouTuber or some sort of influencer at some point in your life. And maybe you've said it to your parents or your teachers and they've laughed at you and they've been like, oh, you, you can never make money off that or you can, you're can you never too interested to do something like that. But it's just people trying to shoot you down at the end of the day. The best thing you can do is just give it a go, see where it takes you. You'll just learn, you'll learn in the process whether, you, whether it's something you like to do or whether it's not and you'll gain valuable skills from it. And just to retouch on the, um, the fan thing where 
you'll always have more fans than enemies at the end of the day. Unless you post some very controversial things, you'll always have a group of fans that are willing to support you. And you just need to remind yourself of that. Like, your fans are real people watching your content. They're not bots or AI. They're real people, and you've got to provide for them. You're not required. Like, once you start content creation, it's not like you're in a legally binding contract to provide for your followers. I don't know, it's just nice to um, treat your followers as humans. <laughs> I know that's a weird thing to say because a lot of influencers don't treat their followers like pe people. They just think of it as a number. Yeah, you just got to appreciate them. And I'll show you what I've actually got on my wall. Um, you come over here. On my wardrobe, I've got comments from friends, family, just describing how um, they enjoy watching my content. And you got to just sometimes just look, look back at that and just see how far you've come. So all in all, that's it for today. Just remember, try and create content, see if you enjoy it, and yeah, stay curious. Peace.